Welcome to the Investor Guys Podcast. Hey, Bill, how are you doing? I am doing fabulous, Kevin Meister. How are you, brother? I'm doing great. Uh, having a great week. Uh, we just got through a hurricane here, yep. which kind of was and wasn't really. Uh, it was a tropical storm, then it became a category one, then it fizzled to a tropical storm, then it became a category one again. It was passed that- us about 140 miles out into the ocean. So all we got was a lot of wind and a lot of rain. But it got me thinking of the hurricanes in the past that both of us have, have gone into uh, markets like Katrina, Houston, the Keys, everything else, picked up properties that had been just devastated by the flooding and the winds and everything else. And we've done other properties as well that have had issues, um, fire, uh, mold, uh, all kind of, I thought today would be a good day to talk about those types of properties because those it. are properties that usually people, they don't even have them on their radar. Um, yep. They have them just, they, they walk by them. They're like, I don't want to deal with it. They don't realize the gold mine that there is in dealing with those properties. So why don't you tell us, why don't we start off with you telling me some of your experiences and why you like the properties? Okay. Uh, so look, one, uh, being in Texas, we're going to have property from time to time that is tornado damage. And being in Texas, we're <laughs> invariably going to run across property with foundation issues. So foundation is what really got me used to dealing with properties that were in terrible shape because I finally got to a point where I, it's just a line item on your budget. Now, here's what that opened me up to. Several years ago, Sandy Salisbury, woman, I've I, love her to death. She's retired now. She ran the title company that I dedicated all my business to. Makes great stakes too. And yeah. <laughs> she, <laughs> uh, and she called me one day and she goes, Hey, would you ever consider doing a fire damaged house? And I said, well, you know, I never have, but sure. And I said, you know, if the numbers work, I'll take a look at one. And she goes, well, I, I know this insurance appraiser. And he called me this morning and said, Hey, do you know any investors that might be interested we just paid out on a house and it's uh, in Mansfield, Texas, which is a great little area. And it's got, uh, it's got fire damage. It went up uh, through the roof uh, in one spot. It had a bay window in the front of the house and it exploded out um, and soot and smoke damage total throughout. And so they said, we've settled with the homeowner. We got this thing now and, and obviously we want to get rid of it. And so uh, I said, sure, I'll I'll go out there and meet with him. And so I go out to the property and it is so soon, it's probably three, four days after the fire. So when- That's a good insurance uh, agency, I'll tell you what. Yeah, yeah. Three days. Yeah, I don't know, uh, I don't remember who it was, but uh, it was a very short period of time from the fire because when I got out there, not only uh, obviously was the smell still prominent, but everything was soaking wet. The house had not been cleaned out and everything, you, when you stepped on the carpet, it was just squish, squish, squish. Uh, so when a, a property has is called, the fire department is called on a property and they're about to squirt one down, they will pull the power meter. They'll either cut it at the pole or they'll pull the meter so they don't get electrocuted. Well, once that happens, they have to call the city. The fire department has to call the city and say, okay, yeah, or they'll they'll send an inspector out. If we're doing it, we call the city. They send an inspector out uh, before they'll turn the power back on. And so obviously if you're gonna rehab a property, you gotta have power. So you call the city, they send an inspector out. The inspector in our case came out and said, well, you know, this place is uh, electrically a wreck. So what we're going to do is we're going to run power off of the pole. That's right. There's one uh, very close to the backyard. We're going to run power off that to you so that you can get this house back in shape. And I'm like, great. And so I didn't think anything else about it. The guy comes and goes, okay, well, uh, when the power company gets there, he's back and he's there for a half hour or so. And he says, okay, well, we're done. Uh, and I'm like, well, wait, wait a minute. What happened? He goes, oh, we, we got screwed away. And they put literally, kid you not, an extension cord in the garage. 
Oh, well, at least, at least it was yeah. in the garage. Usually they just run a pole for me and you have to plug it straight into the box on the pole with the heavy duty cord and then run it from there. So you at least got one in the garage and you're doing, so like, you're doing better than me. Wow, I have two plugs to, <laughs> to rehab a house off of. And by the way, we've got to deal without any problem. However, I love doing houses like that. So I go in, I'm looking at this place. I'm, I'm in, I knew what the comps were. I knew what the, the arv on this property was, but I had no idea as to what it was going to take. So I just assumed it would take everything, which it did. Uh, and I went in and I made an offer and, and I bought this property for 30 grand. Uh, and when I, I threw the, the guy says, well, what do you think? And I said, I don't know. I might be willing to go 30. And he said, done. Not a blink, not a breath. And I'm like, uh oh. Yeah, oh, crap. <laughs> <That's too much. laughs> yeah, so I bought it for 30. And we went in. And if you've ever uh, had an experience with companies like Blackman Mooring, because I this was my very first fire property damaged house. Now, there were only three rooms. Uh, they were all front bedrooms, two bedrooms in the front, and, and a connecting bath, Jack and Jill bath that had gotten all the fire damage a little bit in the hall uh, outside the bedroom. And then it had literally gone up into the uh, ceiling and through the ceiling and through the roof. And one of these bedrooms had a big bay window in it. And, and so this fire had started in one of the bedrooms with the doors all closed and a door got opened. And when it did, the fire basically exploded and exploded the window out. Nobody was hurt. That's uh, great news there. So. Uh, I start uh, thinking, like, wow, man, the, the sheetrock in this house, once you, you're outside of these rooms, the only thing that you have to deal with is the soot. I'm like, this is great. Uh, I know these companies uh, like Blackman Mooring that fix this stuff. They, I see these commercials on them. I'm going to call them and have them come out. They did. The guy's, oh, yeah, we can do this. And he brought this really cool thing out. It was a, a sponge brick like a normal size of a brick, but it's made out of a stiff sponge and it had a chemical treatment on it. And he went over to the wall and he scrubbed a big spot on the wall. And then he, he took like a feather duster kind of thing and, and brushed it off after that. And it was perfect. And I was like, this is so cool. This is awesome. He said, yeah, let me get some numbers together for you and get back. So the number, and this was, years ago, we're talking, my first fire property was probably 17, 18 years ago. Back then, the bid came back to me and the bid was $30,000. Now, I know, uh, Kev, we're going to leave everybody with 30 grand here. It's break time. We're up on one. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back with more Investor Guys podcast. Hang with us. All right. Once a month, with the exception of December, Bill and I go to markets where we have experience and we host a real estate buyer's event. These are markets that have great return potential for your real estate portfolio. We're going to show you the properties that we buy. We're going to show you where to buy, where not to buy, the strategies to use to make great income from these properties. We're also going to show you resources and individuals here on the ground that you can use to start building your team so that you can repeat this process over and over. The real estate buyers events are designed to put high performing properties in your portfolio right away. If you're interested in hearing more about the real estate buyers event, realestatebuyersevent.com. That's realestatebuyersevent.com. Read more about the events, check out the schedule and register. We'll see you there. A lot of real estate training programs claim that they will make you a millionaire, but how many of them will guarantee it? The Millionaire Blueprint comes with a millionaire guarantee. I guarantee that if you use the strategies and you use the formulas that you learn in the Millionaire Blueprint, you will be a millionaire. I guarantee that with a double your money back guarantee. Whether you have hundreds of thousands of dollars to invest or absolutely nothing, it doesn't matter. I'm going to show you how to start investing and be a millionaire guaranteed. Now, I can't tell you all about it in this short amount of time. So go to 
the guaranteed millionaire blueprint.com that's the guaranteed millionaire blueprint.com watch the videos there read about the guarantee read more about what we offer with the millionaire blueprint get signed up i'll see you in palm beach all right and we are back with the investor guys podcast and i was riveted by your story so go ahead and uh keep sharing that you got a estimate back for 30, 30 grand which was exactly bid. what you just spent on the house and just out of curiosity so that we can we can keep track what was your arv on this property i think it was 175 if i'm not mistaken so we're already up to 120 and that's not counting the other work that you had to do in yep. those three bedrooms the yep. roof the carpet that's going to have to be redone uh, everything uh, I'm really by the time you take all your sales numbers out uh, I'm down to about 110 108 something like that uh, and so I'm in total shock at 30 grand and I'm like dude I, I could redo the entire house for 30 grand and the guy would you know oh no you're you're obviously very new to this and uh, very condescending and smug and I went well no, thank you. And sure enough, I did do the entire property for just about 32,000. So we went in and literally here's what we did. So this is, uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, give you a quick um, 90 second overview. Uh, the details are very extensive here. Uh, I'll compare this to uh, for any Steve Martin fans out there in one of his early albums, he had a, a little comedy bit called how to make a million dollars and pay no taxes. And the whole joke is to start with is, okay, first go make a million dollars. That was it, that was the whole thing. So uh, this thing, uh, I came back and we gutted the house. And I say we, the crew and I, went through and we pulled every piece of sheetrock out, every piece of countertop, cabinets, appliances, uh, all the insulation, uh, I had the ductwork cleaned. Um, I did have to replace both the units. Uh, so everything came out of it. And we literally just started over. We had to rewire about 60% of the house, um, but we didn't have to do all of it. And that saved a little bit. The floors, uh, there was a lot of tile in the property. And other than really uh, cleaning the grout really good, uh, it was just basic cleanup. So most of the floors, probably half of the floors, we were able to save. No appliances whatsoever, no countertops, no cabinets, um, and bathrooms, everything. All the porcelain in the bathrooms was fine. It's shocking just how amazing porcelain holds up to all kind of stuff. So we gutted this house down to the studs. And then here's the trick. This is what you do both with fire damage and with water damage, because I bought a flooded house as well. And uh, you really do the same thing to both of them. And that is, uh, I took a product called Bizwanger. Now, uh, Kills makes a product called Kills Premium. Uh, Bizwanger is a little bit more of a commercial grade. And these are sealants. So when you've got a fire damaged property, even once you get rid of everything, you still have a massive amount of smell. This is the tough thing. So how do we handle the smell? Same thing if I've got a flood damage property, how do we handle the mold? We get the mold gone, there's a couple of different things to do, but how do you stop that? Well, one of the things that you can do is you can seal up all of your studs. You can seal up the backside of the brick. You can seal up the underside of the roof with these products. Kills Premium or with Bizwanger. And in there's doing- also a, There's also a product that's really good that we use. It is called um, Zenzer Bullseye. Yep. And it, it's a commercial product as well. And the thing you need to remember when you're doing this is this, this, seals, this seals wood and it will also help with termites and carpenter ants and everything else in the future. But you have to make sure, especially if you're doing a flood property, if there's already been mold, have to have that mold that mildew everything else has to be removed you can't seal it into the wood because it will continue to grow in the wood it won't escape but it will continue to grow in the wood and degrade the wood so we have to remove all of that first 
and then seal everything up. And, and I know exactly the products you're talking about. Um, it, is a, it is also a paint primer. So it works excellent on anything yep. that is wood or, or drywall or anything else. Yep. So we literally just sealed up everything which captured the smell. Now we still have all of that smell, just like with mold, you'd have all of those spores in the air and you can go to A1 Rentals or whoever your local rental, commercial rental place is and they have ionizers. Uh, and an ionizer uh, kind of looks like, if you remember swamp coolers, kind of looks like a swamp cooler. Uh, they're not gigantic or anything. They're not very expensive. And you can run an ionizer uh, in a house for a couple of days and it'll clean the air uh, and it'll take out that smell. And for mold properties or flood properties, it'll take out the spore count in the air. So you have to do that. Once we got that done, we were ready to, to really just start a traditional build out. Build out, I made about 45,000 uh, after all fees, uh, after all carrying costs, after all of that. Uh, and not a, you know, not a bad deal at all. Uh, so take a look at, don't miss a lot of great properties out there. Now, how do you find these properties? I would suggest, and I've got a little network here that I use, uh, that I have built myself, and you can do the same thing, a network of insurance adjusters. So you can call your title company and say, hey, who do you know that is a fire adjuster? And they'll tell you, because you want to make sure you don't get auto adjusters. adjusters. So uh, who do you know that's a fire adjuster? Now, a fire adjuster is likely going to be a flood adjuster as well. Uh, they're typically uh, trained for both. So they'll just say, hey, uh, yeah, or you can literally call your insurance agent. And if you do, let your insurance agent know, hey, I don't have a claim. I have a question. I'm looking for property. Can you hook me up with an adjuster? And they'll usually hook you up with two or three. And then the adjusters, just like investors, the adjusters have association. And so the adjuster will also introduce you, especially when they know what you're looking for. Hey, what I'm trying to do here is buy more fire damaged property, buy more flood damaged property, uh, water damage. So how do we do that? So adjusters, uh, insurance adjusters are an excellent way to get into a circle of people that constantly have property coming their way. Hey, it's uh, break time here, Kip. Let's do a real quick and we'll be right back. Thanks for hanging with us and we'll be more on uh, abandon and condemn property when we get back. We'll see you in a minute. Hi, my name is Kevin Mills. I have a real estate training program that is so powerful, I will back it up with a double your money back guarantee that it will make you a millionaire. That's right. Double your money back guarantee that you will be a millionaire if you use what you learn in the millionaire blueprint. I call it the guaranteed millionaire blueprint. And you can read more about it and watch more videos at guaranteedmillionaireblueprint.com. That's guaranteedmillionaireblueprint.com. Check it out. All the information is there. Las Vegas isn't only a great city to visit, it's a great city to invest in. Bill and I both have been investing in the Vegas area for decades, and that's one of the reasons why we have our Real Estate Buyers event in Las Vegas, Nevada. Check out the same strategies, the same types of properties, the resources that we're using here on the ground, the people that we're using here on the ground to get the same types of returns that we're getting here in Las Vegas. The Real Estate Buyers Event, that's realestatebuyersevent.com. Read more about this event, find out where we're gonna be, including where we're gonna be in Vegas next and register. We'll see you soon. And we're back with the Investor Guys podcast. And you, know, you were talking about the ionizers. I, I have my own construction company and we actually purchased our own ozone generators. And the ozone generators do the exact same thing. They make the oxygen bond with the other molecules in the air, which kills the other molecules, which removes the odor. It kills the mold spores. It does everything else. We actually have our own ozone generators. I even use them at the house because if you got guests staying over in their room. They just stay in the room the whole time. They, the doors closed. When you have teens, uh, I don't have teens anymore, but I'll take that generator and I'll put it in the room and I'll let it run for the day. And before they get back, open it up because you don't want to breathe that because there's no oxygen there. 
Um, let it open up. It literally, it kills the smell. It kills everything, makes it smell fresher. Uh, for properties that we've done rehabs on that we're getting ready to show, I'll, I'll run the ozone generators for a couple of days in there in the different rooms and it will make it smell a lot better. It takes out all that funky pet smell, teen smell, the smell of, you know, crazy food that people have cooked in the past. Uh, it, it just Smoke. gets rid of everything. Smokers. Yes. Uh, so let me throw you out a quick thing here that just reminds me of this. Um, if you go into a house that, especially like an REO property, I, I use this, love it. It is a fabulous, fabulous technique to get a big discount on money. If you get in and you remotely suspect there could be mold, and how do I mean remotely suspect it? Well, if the key opens the front door, then I remotely suspect there could be mold there. And I have a, a company that I use here in town they charge me $350 and they come in and they do a mold test. So if I'm looking now, this is only for REO property for me, only for REO property. If I go in and I look at an REO property and look, if it's just really nasty, likelihood is it's got some mold somewhere. So I will call and have these guys come out and they will do a mold test and they they are licensed, and so when they submit their test results, if it's not in the listing already, and you take that back to the the uh, listing agent, hey, I really like this property, about to make a bid on it, but you know it's got mold. Oh no no. Oh yeah yeah yeah. I paid to have this done. Here's the company that did it, and here's what they found. Uh, you can knock off ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars like that off of your bid price once that uh, it's been discovered that there's mold and you might be surprised <laughs> how many houses uh, actually have uh, recordable mold, mold in them. Actually, so, most, uh, most great, houses great. have recordable mold. Um, yep. Keep in mind though, one thing, if you do have mold and you, you have to do remediation, that is something that you have to disclose when you sell the property, which means you also have to show that it had mold remediation done. Yep. So if you purchase a property that has had mold found in it, even if you found it in there, it is something you have to disclose to your tenants yeah. if you rent and to- Now you're in a different part of the world and, and you guys have to have, in fact, you probably had to get a permit to wear that tie today. I'm in Texas. It's a well, I'm, in, I'm in Florida now, so I can do whatever I want. You're in California? I'm in Florida. Oh yeah, that's what I said. You probably had to, California and uh, Florida is not much better. Uh, Florida is very uh, permit oriented, but you know, here, um, once we, a mold is associated with a property and you have that mold remediated and can you do it yourself? Yes. If you can get a remediation firm to come out and do your sport count and do a test for you and guess who's a great company to call to come out and do the test for you. The same company that you used when you discovered it. So uh, then you can go in and then it's just a, close, a disclosure. It's no different than doing lead-based paint. It's no right. different than doing um, foundation issues. It is just a disclosure at that moment. But look, these are fabulous properties to get incredible deals on. And most investors, look, most of you are uh, very hesitant to move forward on these kind of properties. And it's simply because you haven't been trained on that yet. That's the kind of stuff that Kevin and I do. When you look at understanding the process, and I can look at water damage because I know how to fix it. I can look at fire damage at because I know how to fix it. I don't have an issue with mold because I know how to fix it. I don't have an issue with uh, dealing with foundation problems. So once you get to that point that you know you have a confidence level because of your knowledge base, then you can go out and significantly less competition on these properties, deeper discounts, and you can get some sweet deals. And look, it's just a line item. Once you figure that out, uh, then it becomes a yeah, very- Once you know what it's gonna cost you and you can figure that out, it all boils down to numbers. Like we say over and over and over again, it has to work for the numbers. If you know the number and it works, it's a good deal. And maybe we can do a part two on this one because I actually have photos. We kind of pulled this out of the, the air last minute but I have photos of different projects that I've done that show 
show the damage and it shows us down to the studs and, and flooring and, and finished product. So I'll see if I, uh, I have a video of this somewhere. I'll see if I can find it for everybody. Uh, I bought a, a house that technically was not flood damaged, but it was flooded. Uh, it was a rental property that a water line is a, a, a split level home. A water line had broken upstairs, a very small one, a feeder line to a toilet. Uh, and had gone uh, unrepaired for about a month. And when I looked at this property, you can imagine July in Texas with standing water, it was about 18 inches of standing water. So I've got a, a, a little short video where I had gone around behind the house and opened, had a walkout basement and opened up uh, the back door and watched the water uh, roll out of it, which was pretty interesting. So, I've got some pretty crazy pictures of literally mold growing up the wall. Oh, yeah. It looks like you can smell this from the street. You can smell mold. Yeah. From the street. So We've bad. got, I've got pictures that I, I really want to show you guys. It was, this is what you have to be careful. Of. This was a grow house that had gotten taken back by the bank. An investor purchased this property, didn't do anything, slapped paint on the whole thing, tried to hide everything and then sold it to another investor who put tenants in it, who had a major issue with mold and everything else, literally just growing through the paint. It was growing out from the floor. And I got the property from them and we totally gutted it. And like I said, I've got pictures of this property. I'll go over all that. We'll do a part two on this because right. this, is, this is a strategy that, that literally people focus on. Our good friend, Reggie Brooks, this is his focus is, forgotten, abandoned, and, okay. and happily dead buildings. Um, this is something that people just focus on. It is a good way to make a lot of money because you have huge margins because you're picking up these properties for practically nothing. Uh, insurance companies have deep pockets. Uh, you probably could have gotten that property that you paid 34 for 15 or 20 yeah. because yeah. He just needed it I, off of I his absolutely books. believe I could have gotten it for 20 without question, right. but you're probably right. I probably could have got it for 15. And okay. you know what? Live and learn. And this That's is why right. we do this. Right. And, and next time we get better deals. I've picked up properties in Houston after the hurricane and in Katrina where I paid $2,000, where I paid $5,000, where I paid basically closing costs to transfer the property into my name because the insurance company had to get rid of it because it wasn't just one property that had been damaged. Right? They had hundreds of properties that they had to clear out. So they were happy to get rid of them because they have to pay the property tax on it. Yep. They have to pay the maintenance liability. on it. Yeah. And there's they liability have having a, a vacant property sitting there, especially for an expen extended period of time. Okay. We are run up on it. We are a little bit uh, running long today. Thanks for hanging with us for the Investor Guys podcast. We will be doing a part two on flood. Yes. Fire, now get those photos together for next week. Damage. We look forward to seeing you. Thank you for joining us. Follow us on Facebook. Like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on your favorite podcast platform. We'll see you again soon. Happy investing. Thanks, everybody. See you, Kevin.